So I've reported to today the data on Checkmate 142, which is a multi-cohort phase two study. Previously, the data on the refractory colorectal cancer patient with MSI high tumors were reported in JCO, showing significant activity with nivolumab and ipilimumab in refractory patient population. The response rate in, in that group was 55% for the combination and 31% for the monotherapy. The median progression-free survival and overall survival have not been reached. The toxicity was treatment-related grade three and grade four about six, 16% for the monotherapy and 32% for the combination treatment. The 12-month progression-free rate was 77 and overall survival at 12, 12 months was 83%. Today I reported for the first time the first-line treatments with a combination of nivolumab at 3 mg per kilogram and ipilimumab at 1 mg per kilogram. This is in six-week interval, which is in contrast to the three-week interval in the refractory patient population. Now, the refractory efficacy data led to an accelerated FDA approval for NEVO alone or in combination with ipilimumab for patients with metastatic MSI high tumors who were treated previously with fluoropyrimidines, oxaloplatin, and irinotecan. In the first line cohort, we involved 45 patients, 50% were male, median age 66. We collected data on PDL1 expression, KVAS, mutation, BVAF, mutation status, as well as the presence of Lynch syndrome. The efficacy data were very impressive with an overall response rate of 60%, 7% with a complete response. The disease control rate, which indicates at least stable disease beyond 12 weeks, was 84%. Now, the response was independent of PDL1 expression, independent of KVAS or BVAF mutational status, as well as independent of the Lynch syndrome presence or not. In addition to the significant efficacy, we saw significant lower toxicity because of the increased interval used for the ipilimumab. Only 16% had grade three, four treatment related adverse events, which is basically the same than NEVO as monotherapy. Only 7% discontinued treatment because of treatment-related adverse events, which is the same than for NEVO monotherapy. So these data indicate a highly effective treatment option in first line for patients with MSI high metastatic colorectal cancer. So the big question is, are these data sufficient for potential registration with the FDA? I'm sure that the BMS team will start discussion with FDA, what would be needed. I think we are all waiting for the keynote study, which used PEMPRO in first line for the same patient population, if they are consistent with it. I think it's very important maybe to mention that MSI high tumors have a very poor prognosis. So. PFS rates are around only seven months and the um, overall survival only 20 months. In this trial, the median has not been achieved. The 12 month rate are 77% for PFS and 84% for overall survival. So these data look very promising for a sustained long-term survival benefit for these patients who are usually poorly prognostic.